It was great. It was a little weird, but it was fun. But it's good to be home. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comments section. I'd really, really appreciate it. So yes, here I am back to recap my latest trip to Portland. Uh, went up there, spent a few days, about three days up there, left on Tuesday morning, and came back yesterday afternoon, Friday afternoon. So yeah, about three days is just about the ideal time for me anyway. Uh, to uh, roam around Portland. Uh, I Basically, I just go up there to hit the record stores. I like to uh, briefly check out uh, the Powell's bookstores. Actually hit two of them uh, on this trip. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'll get into that in just a minute. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to meander on too much. But, yeah, the, um, I'll explain how it was a little bit weird in just a minute. Uh, well, one of the things that made it weird was I didn't come back with any vlog footage unfortunately. I, I wanted to, but uh, for, for one thing, it rained most of the time we were up there. Yeah, It's a little unusual for uh, Oregon to have, you know, steady long-term rain uh, by the second half of May. It's usually gotten sunny and, and warm and bright and uh, stuff, and we don't see a whole lot of rain from that point on. But yeah, the whole day Tuesday it rained pretty good. I, I think the weather report the next morning said we got almost a half an inch of rain up in Portland uh, just on Tuesday, so... Wednesday, it was kind of showery off and on, and, uh, you know, I, I don't like to get my phone wet. I know just a little bit of rain on it's not going to hurt it, but, you know. And, well, plus I don't like to stand out in the rain very, very much, more than I need to. Uh, thought about taking my umbrella, but uh, the thought kind of left my brain as soon as I thought about it. And uh, so, you know, it is what it is. So the weather is going to do what it's going to do. Uh, but also, I kind of wasn't really in the mood to vlog very much. Uh, besides, basically, I hit the same record stores pretty much and the same locales when I'm up there. I'm a bit of a creature of habit, what can I say? So I would kind of be giving you basically the same vlog footage I would give you each time I'm up there, uh, which I have done a couple of times in my Portland videos. There's, I've got a playlist of my Portland videos. You'll kind of see what I mean. There's, uh, It's kind of uh, the same old stuff. Maybe from different angles, maybe with a little bit of different lighting, but, you know. Anyway, <laughs> so yes, one of these days, maybe, I mean, yes, I'm already all six years into this channel, but maybe one of these days I will get uh, really, really good at vlogging. Uh, who knows? But anyway, uh, yeah, so yeah, it was kind of raining, and uh, here's here's where the weird part comes in. Uh, I was really, you know, for the, like, the two weeks leading up to the trip, I was really, really anxious, really just chomping at the bit to get up to Portland and go uh, scoping out the record stores up there. And once I'm up there on Tuesday morning and I'm standing in the middle of uh, Music Millennium, it's kind of, it was kind of anticlimactic, almost. You know, I, I just kind of, you know, okay, I'm here, I'm, I'm looking at the CDs, you know. And I, I guess maybe it's a symptom of, you know, in my last, I think my last video I put out, I was talking about uh, am I, um, am I, uh, facing CD burnout, and I think maybe, you know, to an extent, I am kind of not quite over the CD burnout. Maybe it is a real thing this time. Uh, hopefully it won't last forever, but uh, still, still though, I had fun. I got a couple, a few goodies. You know, I mentioned in my last video that I was trying to uh, cut back on CD spending. One of the decisions, there was a whole bunch of other stuff that I could have bought when I was up there, and uh, one of the criteria that I used in buying stuff is if I can probably special order it from another store or find it, you know, find it commonly at any other store, I'm going to pass on it for now. So I wanted to concentrate on the stuff that was a little hard to find that I almost never see in stores. So yes, I could have bought the other two Sloan CDs I was missing. Uh, they were $15.99 each. They were in the new section. So it's like, eh, I wanted to moderate my spending as much as I could. So I passed on those. Uh, I was thinking about getting a couple more Clash CDs and a couple more uh, Bob Dylan CDs. But again, you know, those, you could probably find those at a Barnes & Noble. And, uh, you know, I could always, you know, special order them from House of Records or whatever. So, yeah, decided to uh, forego that stuff in favor of the more the more uncommon stuff. Um, yes, in my pledge to uh, cut back on the CD spending, 
or the CD buying, I came home with about 30 CDs. So that's uh, more than or f fewer than I would not ordinarily come home with on a trip up to Portland. I uh, I usually plunder the uh, the budget bins first. Uh, Music Millennium did actually did not have their budget bins out because they are, <laughs> I found out later this weekend, they will be doing their sidewalk sale. Uh, all, a whole bunch of CDs, thousands of CDs, two bucks a piece. So unfortunately, I missed out on that. Uh, I will know better next time. Apparently, they always do that sidewalk sale on Memorial Day weekend, so I will remember next time. Uh, maybe next year, Memorial Day weekend, I'll be able to time a trip up there. But anyway... So yeah, I actually only got two CDs out of the bargain bin. Uh, and yeah, the rest of them I got were, were regularly priced, uh, depending on what their, you know, their pricing is up there. Uh, and I only got two books at Powell's. Uh, and I'll, I'll decided, uh, of course, I'm going to show you the haul that I got. You know, that's the point of this video, basically. So I thought I'd show you the books first. Uh, first one is... Anatomy of 55 More Songs. It's by Mark Myers, and it's basically a chapter devoted to each of 55 songs, basically the stories behind how the songs were written and recorded and stuff, uh, told by the, um, usually the artists, sometimes the songwriters, producers, told to the artist Mark Myers. Apparently, this, uh, these books, actually there is a second book, uh, as um, suggested by the word more in the title. This one was put out in 2016, Anatomy of a Song. But no, it's not about just one song. It's about four, 45 songs in this book, 55 songs in this one. And apparently this guy, Mark Myers, uh, does this as a column in a, probably just an online newspaper some, somewhere. I'm not sure I didn't do the, the uh, research that I should have done before making this video. But anyway, uh, yes, I leafed through it, uh, read a couple of the uh, parts of, of a couple of the chapters. Very interesting uh, stuff. So yes, I've got both books. Um, Yes, I bought the second one before I finished reading the first one. That's, that's the way I am sometimes. I, I buy books, and it takes me forever, forever to read them. But anyway, so yes, and, and both of those were twelve ninety eight dollars each. So, uh, yeah, although I've, I've had the first one for a while. I got the second one today, or uh, this weekend, this week, whatever it is. Anyway, <laughs> the next one I got, the other one I got was, it's called The Listening Party. It's by Tim Burgess, and it's... Uh, the subtitle is Artists, band, Bands, and Fans Reflect on 100 Favorite Albums. So it's basically about, um, they go track by track through some albums um, with stories and uh, reminiscences and thoughts by the uh, people who made the album. Let me see if I can get uh, this. So a lot of these albums are kind of um, not uh, really well-known things. But, uh, for instance, this one is uh, Dig Your Own Hole by the Chemical Brothers. And, uh, you know, a little uh, summary up here. And then comments. Uh, most of these are track-by-track -track comments by the uh, people involved in making the album. So I thought it looked like a really interesting read. So, hmm. so yeah, there's the back cover. So, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, you know, $21, a little bit on the spendy side, but then I didn't buy much at Pals. So, those were the books. And so let's go ahead and get on with the CDs. I kind of uh, arranged these by theme, sort of, uh, which, uh, as I will explain as I go on through the, uh, through the list of stuff. Take a drink here. Uh, <clears throat> first two CDs are the only two that I picked out of the uh, budget bins. These were 50 cents a piece. Yep, 50 cents a piece. Uh, first one is, uh, let's see, which side do I want to be on? Not sure. Anyway, <laughs> Zoot Suit Riot, the uh, swing and hits of the Cherry Pop and Daddies. This is actually an Oregon-based um, group. They, they formed in Oregon. And one of these days, soon, sometime soon, I will do a video about artists that are from the Oregon area, uh, either Portland or Eugene, and uh, artists that I've gotten into from you know, local artists. The other one I got, you know, uh, yeah, Cherry Poppinetti's is very famous for their song Zoot Suit Riot, uh, which Weird Al redid as a Grapefruit Diet. So, a little trivia there for you. Uh, the, uh, the other 50 cent CD I got is by a group called Trickside. This was, I think, their one and only album. Uh, if you uh, kind of like Sugar Ray, but without the but without the rap, just kind of a, a pop rock 
sort of thing, radio-friendly stuff. I had this CD many, many, many years ago. I probably got rid of it at least 15 years ago, probably closer to 20 years ago. Um, but I decided I wanted to give it another try, another shot. And uh, so, yeah, uh, there, the song Under You was the single that came off this album. But uh, I, I still remember the one reason I got the CD was because I still remember several of the songs, pieces of several of the songs, just by looking at the track listing. Uh, Beautiful Thing is the opening track. Uh, Into Thin Air is, uh, that's kind of a ska, reggae ska kind of a piece. Uh, I Won't is another good song, as I recall. Heavy Rain. So, yeah. Give those guys a listen. They're probably somewhere on some streaming service or maybe on YouTube. But, uh, yeah. Give that one another try after having it not been in my library for 20 years, probably. Yeah. So they, they almost put out in 2001. So... Anyway, these next few I got um, are things that I have have or had different versions of that I wanted to uh, check out. These this, this is this would be the next three that I'm going to show you. Uh, first one is the Manhattan Transfer. This is uh, the definitive pop collection. I have several uh, volumes in this definitive series, and uh, one of their uh, hallmarks or uh, features is this. Um, what do you call it? Um, sectioned off or squared off? Uh, mo mosaic. That's the word I'm trying to think of. A picture of the artist on the front. And uh, yes, they have uh, volumes, definitive pop collection, definitive soul collection, definitive funk collection, uh, depending on what genre the artist specializes in. Like I've got um, Booker T and the MGs. And who else do I have? Got? I've got the Everly Brothers, definitive pop collection. And uh, I think I have Big Joe Turner. He was a Check out Big Joe Turner if you haven't yet. He's a great, was one of the uh, progenitors of rock and roll. He had kind of a uh, early rhythm and blues uh, soul kind of a, a feel to Great artist. But anyway, this is the Manhattan Transfer version. And uh, two discs. E each of these uh, definitive, in the definitive series, is two discs. And uh, so, yeah, lots of good stuff. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yes, I, I had a two-disc Manhattan Transfer collection, but I'd gotten it used, and it was a little bit beat up. And uh, I happen to like series like this and, you know, like the Millennium Collection. And there's the uh, Gold series that I think the Universal family of labels puts out. stuff. So I'm kind of a fan of having series like that. I'm a little weird, I know. And anyway, this next one, uh, I have the regular CD version of this, but they had the dual disc version of Nellie Mackay's Get Away From Me. And uh, the original... Regular version of it is split uh, between two discs. It's uh, 18 tracks, so she had nine tracks on each disc. This one is just one disc, and the first, the CD side is the entire album, the, the entire double-length album. And, of course, there's a DVD side that's got, uh, let's see, all 18 songs in 5.1 5 surround sound, a, a live concert, uh, San Francisco Night, live at the Independent, and a couple of bonus studio tracks on it. So... Uh, I, I kind of like the uh, dual discs. Not a huge fan of it. Not as much as um, Super Wes is. He loves collecting the dual discs. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to get that just for the DVD features and stuff. I, I want to try and make an effort, more of an effort, to look at the DVDs. The DVDs and the DVD sides of dual discs that I have in my collection. I tend to just leave them there. They've got DVDs that I, that I never watch. I need to, you know... You get the full bang for my buck, if you will. Speaking of CDs and DVDs together, Genesis Invisible Touch. I have this on vinyl, but I saw this, and yes, a bit of a hefty price tag, 20 bucks. but it is their remastered CD, as well as a DVD with um, their music videos and what probably a couple other things. Uh, uh, oh, Reissues Interview from 2007, the band, and uh, Behind the Scenes of the Land of Confusion video. The Land of Confusion video is one of my all-time favorite music videos. It was done with um, by a a puppetry troupe from the UK called Spitting Image. Their hallmark was caricaturized puppets of famous people, Pol politicians, musicians, actors, the whole nine yards. And uh, the video is something else. It's it's just great. It's lots of fun to watch. The song is serious subject matter, but the, the video is very entertaining. So, yeah, go on to YouTube and check out 
the music video for Genesis Land of Confusion. It's a lot of it. It's very entertaining to watch. But yeah, was happy to get that. My favorite Genesis album. Really enjoy that. Uh, coming, uh, coming up next are a couple of random things before I get into um, filling hole, the filling holes in my collection uh, section of here. Uh, I've, I've, I'm a fan of Nora Jones, uh, a casual fan of Nora Jones. I've got her first two or three albums, and I picked up her most recent album from this year. Rather enjoyed it, so I've decided to give a try to uh, you know Nora Jones albums as I see them in the stores for good prices. Uh, this is a it says it's a 2023 reissue of her album Little Broken Hearts. It's actually got two discs. Uh, the first disc is the original album, expanded with bonus tracks and remixes. And the second disc is live at Austin City Limits in 2012. So, yes, a, a very, pretty good, I thought, uh, uh, purchase, uh, lots of content for just $6 used. So, so I'll pick that up. This next one is um, continuing a uh, thing that... Uh, my little brother Noah gave me a CD of Steel Train, which is a group, uh, one of uh, Jack Antonoff's early groups, and uh, rather enjoyed it. And I was there this week and found their self-titled CD for just uh, six bucks. Yeah, just six bucks. So I decided to pick it up. And uh, he tells me that this is this is the one that uh, most clo yeah, most closely resembles sonically uh, Bleacher's stuff. You know, the synth pop stuff that he. Uh, has kind of become his hallmark over the years. And so he thinks I will enjoy the CD, so I am very, very much looking forward to listening to it. So, uh, yeah. This one is all Noah's fault. Uh, this next one, this was at uh, Everyday Music, and I just happened to see it in the... Uh, they have a New Arrivals used CD section, which they divide up into days, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, and alphabetize them within each of those days. And uh, see so yeah, they have... You know, all the time at all times they have a week's worth of new release of new arrivals, uh, used CDs that customers have come in to sell them, and uh, this was sitting right in the front and it looked interesting. I believe her name is pronounced Ayo, that's A Y O, and this is her debut album Joyful. Uh, she was she was born in Germany, but uh, she is of African descent, and all of the songs are are in English, so I'm kind of expecting. I haven't listened to any of these yet. Uh, but I'm kind of expecting this is going to have a bit of a sound of like um, uh, Angelique Kijo, who I really, really enjoy. Uh, Afropop is what I'm kind of expecting this will be. So uh, very much looking forward to checking it out for sure. And uh, then here we go on into one of the uh, bigger sections of my finds, my uh, haul here. This is uh, filling holes in my discographies. Uh, yes, I said in my... Uh, burnout video last time. I'm not just going and buying willy-nilly stuff just just for the sake of uh, filling gaps in discographies. These are artists I really, really enjoy. Uh, first off here, we have Bela Fleck, who is a banjo player, uh, mostly in the bluegrass genre, but he's dabbled in jazz and a little bit of classical and stuff. Uh, this is an album called uh, Tales from the Acoustic Planet. And uh, yes, I, I did have one of these I'd bought recently, but uh, the disc was uh, kind of scratched up and stuff. So this one was only, well, it's $5. I, you know, $5 is not only $5 to some people, but uh, I figured uh, for uh, as much as I enjoyed it first time around, or at least the part that I was able to listen to, I decided to pick up a much better condition copy of it. So yes, um, Let's see, what do we have? Uh, Backwoods Galaxy is the name of one of the songs here. And uh, Cheese Balls in Cowtown is another name. Uh, so yes, he is, uh, one of the things he's kind of uh, known for is uh, quirky and whimsical song titles in his albums. So I figured that was worth picking up. This one I was really happy to find. Uh, kind of wish it wasn't a promo that, you know, it didn't have that uh, the promo stamp on the front cover. But it is the only Randall Bramblett album I was missing. And this is... Uh, see through me. So yes, I was very happy. I had this a long time ago, and for once, whatever stupid reason, I got rid of it. I guess at the time I just wasn't uh, very enamored of it, but I've come to enjoy Randall Brand a lot more lately. So was very happy to fill that gap in my collection, and also I was able to complete my Whitney Houston collection with her album uh, "I Look to You." So yeah, I've got. Uh, I I didn't realize uh, until. Oh, about a year ago, looking at her discography, she only made seven studio albums. 
which is, you know, kind of, you know, for an artist like Whitney Houston, you would have thought, okay, okay, yeah, she's got a uh, discography 15, 20 CDs long. No, just seven albums. So, yes, I was happy to get this one. And then uh, this is not the last uh, album by this artist that I was missing, but is the last in their the first phase of their discography, so, so, so to speak. The Mavericks, with uh, their album... Uh, From Hell to Paradise is the name of this album. So yes, I now have all of the Mavericks' first six studio albums, I think. Really come to enjoy this. these guys. They're uh, country with a little bit of, I kind of call them a Tex-Mex band. Uh, Raul Malo is the lead singer and the, the front man. And so they've got a little bit of a Latin uh, sound to them, but it's mostly country. Really enjoy them. And uh, also uh, one of the last, one of the last three albums by this artist that I was missing, so I now only, I'm now only missing two albums by Sloan. Uh, this is The Double Cross, and speaking of Uncommon, and, and Uncommon and filling another gap in my discography, uh, Wet, Wet, Wet. This is their album uh, Holding Back the Rain, Holding, Holding Back the River. Yeah. It just says R there before the price tag. Uh, Holding Back the River. I have three of their albums, or had three of their albums up before now, and so this is one of theirs. Uh, early albums that I was missing, so happy to pick that one up. Really enjoy them. They're kind of a, uh, what do they call that stuff? New Romantic stuff, kind of like Spandau Ballet. They were popular in the 80s. So. And then, um, <clears throat> uh, thanks to a CD I got in a bargain bag last year, kind of uh, started to appreciate these guys, the Spin Doctors. Uh, picked up their second album uh, recently, and this is their third album, so I thought I'd pick this one up. So, yeah. Rather enjoy them. Yes, they are not just pocket full of kryptonite. They are uh, much more than that. Uh, they're rather enjoyable. Then I got um, a, another Oregon artist, and I had had this uh, couple of this guy's albums before I realized he's from Oregon. A jazz pianist, I believe, named Tom Grant, and uh, this is his one of his albums, uh, Edge of the World. One of his albums, three, I think, three and the best of that he did on the Verve Forecast label. I've got the other two individual studio albums, and so, uh, yeah, building my Tom Grant collection. And this actually was is on, I believe I still have the cassette of this. This was in my uh, the huge cassette lot that I got from my mother's friend a few years ago. But I wanted to pick it up on CD as well. And speaking of instrumental stuff, Jazz New Age, I uh, found another CD I was missing by Peter Buffett, a New Age uh, artist that I enjoyed way, way back in the day. Uh, cooled off on that stuff many years ago, but in rec in the last year or so, I've kind of gotten back into it again. I've got uh, got two of his other albums, and so this is the third of his albums that I've got from the Narada label, One on One. It's a good, uh, good stuff. And uh, now, let me take a drink again real quick. Then we're getting into uh, some best ofs that I managed to pick up. Uh, had some luck with the best ofs, or, or well, luck, I don't know if that's the word, just uh, stuff that uh, looked interesting. Uh, first off, we have the Best of Chubby Checker. I have a Best of Chubby Checker, but it was only like 10 songs. This one is 24 songs, so uh, just slightly expanded from that. But uh, yeah, Chubby Checker was kind of a one-trick pony, you know, you know kind of a, a one gear, the twist, and he kind of uh, parlayed that uh, probably a little bit longer than he should have. But, uh, you know, I wanted to see what else he had that I might have been missing. Some of the slightly deeper cuts being more than twice as long as the other compilation I have. Uh, maybe he's uh, got more stuff up up his sleeve uh, with this than he. Uh, and actually, I think he is still alive and kicking. He's got to be in his 80s, possibly in his 90s. But uh, yeah. And then we have Shaka Khan. Uh, this is a greatest hits of hers. Uh, Epiphany, the best of Shaka Khan, Volume One. I don't know if there was ever a volume two, but yes, I saw a profile of her recently on TV and she had so much, had so many hits that I had forgotten about. You know, one of those artists where, you know, you, you hear the songs and it's like, oh, she did that one. Oh, and she did that one too. You know, and just like the list, the list kept going on. You know, I Feel For You, one of her big hits, uh, I'm Every Woman, and then uh, Ain't Nobody. I don't know if she originally did Ain't Nobody, but uh Let's see, uh, Through the Fire is a great song of hers. And uh, let's see. But yeah, lots of fun. It was, it was 
rem reminded me when I saw that story, that profile on her, reminded me of how many great songs she did. Then we have something kind of fun, The Best of the Waitresses. Now this is a, they dabbled a little bit into hip hop, a little bit into rap, but they were mostly a pop, pop R&B uh, group. Let's see. Uh, I know, but I know what boys like. She did that one. She also did the title song from a sitcom from the '80s, which I think only ran one season, called Square Pegs. That, that was a lot of fun. Probably their most famous song is Christmas Rapping. You'll find that on a lot of uh, holiday compilations. Uh, but yeah, I figured that was uh, lots of fun. To uh, I'm definitely looking forward to listening to that one. And then an artist that I've um, heard just a little bit of, but I figured I really ought to uh, delve much deeper into this guy. He's a folk artist from, uh, started out in the 60s, uh, Richie Havens. So yes, I heard his uh, his song Handsome Johnny is the one that I've heard the most often, uh, thanks to a 10-part uh, uh, History of Rock and Roll documentary series that I like to watch over and over again. But uh, yeah, I figured I need, to, I need to listen to what else he's got. Um, in his catalog. So yeah, I figured that would be a wise purchase. <clears throat> and then uh, just one CD in the comedy or spoken word category, and that is Stan Freeberg. Um, this is the Capital Collector series version of his uh, er, compilation. Capital did a collector series that's with kind of the same scheme here. They did, uh, I think I have the Andrew Sisters volume. Uh, do I still have the Nat King Cole, or I think I upgraded to a, a better thing than that. Anyway, uh, I used to have this one a long time ago, but uh, traded it up for another CD that uh, I didn't realize at the time was missing some songs that I really, really enjoyed. So I decided to go and uh, pick this one up again. So yes, decided to, uh, yes. Stan Freeberg is lots of fun. Sat satirist, uh, uh, you know, uh, parodist, kind of a progenitor of Weird Al Yankovic, basically. So lots of fun. Now we're getting into the Soundtrack and soundtrack related stuff. Uh, yes, one of the first sections I went to at each of the stores I went to was the soundtracks. See if I could find any John Williams stuff. And uh, spoiler alert, I did. You'll see it in just a few minutes. Uh, but I found lots of other stuff that uh, I didn't expect to find. Uh, for instance, this one, Babalu Music. This is um, I Love Lucy's Greatest Hits. It's basically um, some stuff that, uh, you know, the, the Calypso stuff that. Uh, Ricky Ricardo did on the show and uh, uh, kind of made made famous uh, through the show. And this album was... One, one reason I really wanted to pick this one up, I, well, I'm only kind of a sort of a fan of, uh, I Love you, of I Love Lucy and of Calypso music in general, but as you see in the credits here, as you can see, produced by Al Yankovic. Yes, Weird Al Yankovic produced this CD. I think this is the, the first one that he wasn't, that he didn't appear on, that he produced. So yes, his first real deep dive foray into producing an album by someone else. So that was that's one reason I picked it up. But uh, yeah, so yeah, and I, I I think it's it's usually available at a higher price. Uh, you know, when I go online, I think it's it seems to be more uh, higher priced. Uh, kind of the case with, and I forgot to mention this, the Manhattan Transfer, that definitive pop collection. I kind of wanted that for a while, but it always seemed to be fifteen, twenty plus dollars for a used copy online. So, was happy to pick that one up. And I thought there was another one that was kind of uh, usually goes for a higher price, but anyway, I don't know which one it was. Uh, next one I picked up is uh, the Brady Bunch movie, the soundtrack. Yes, lots of fun. I, I enjoyed that movie, and uh, kind of fun to have the those cheesy pop '70s Brady Bunch hits in, uh, juxtaposed with grunge songs uh, from the early 90s, which was when this movie was made. So, And a fun movie, too. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. Then a couple of... Apparently I was in the mood to pick up a couple of Cliff Eidelman scores. Not sure why. Uh, a Simple Twist of Fate. This was apparently a uh, Steve Martin movie. And Untamed Heart, a movie with... Um, what's his name? I can't remember what his name was. Christian Slater. Thank you. So we pick those up, and then now this is one that um, I think I think I had before. Uh, got rid of it and decided to pick it up again. The soundtrack from two thousand one, A Space Odyssey. Uh, well, it's, you know, mostly classical, but still fun to enjoy, to fun to listen to, and stuff. This one was uh, this one is not really. Yeah, these next three actually are not actually soundtracks, but they are soundtrack adjacent. They're well, they have to do with soundtracks. Uh, this one, 
The Ultimate Pink Panther, uh, stuff from uh, selections from each of the Pink Panther movies. I've got a CD of Henry Mancini's uh, greatest hits, and there is, you know, uh, at least one. There might be several songs from the Pink Panther uh, movies in it, but uh, yeah, this one looked fun, looked interesting, and so I decided to go ahead and pick it up. And then a a John Barry compilation, uh, the best of John Mary, John Barry themeology. So uh, I, I have one, at least I think I still have it, but it was uh, really beat up. I think I got it off the uh, freebie shelf at House of Records. It was uh, one much shorter than this, than this one. Only had like 10, 10 tracks on it, and it was an, from an earlier time period. And uh, yeah, enjoyed it, but uh, this one is not only has more tracks on it, but it's in much better shape. Um, but yeah, you can see the uh, track listing on there. And of course, it's got uh, several James Bond songs on it. Uh, Midnight Cowboy. Let's see. Born Free. That was a song that uh, kind of he was uh, made famous. Dances with Wolves, Out of Africa. Several of the uh, noteworthy movies that he scored. And then uh, coming up to... Excuse me. Almost the last item in uh, my stuff here. The film music of Jerry Goldsmith, and this is actually composed, or yeah, stuff that he composed, obviously, but it's also conducted by Jerry Goldsmith and performed by the London Symphony Orchestra, which is one of the best orchestras out there for in terms of film scores. So yes, I had to pick this one up. Uh, it is on the Telarc label, which I have uh, several other um, stuff, uh, several other, other releases, mostly by the Cincinnati Pops, Pops Orchestra. But yes, I figured this was a pretty good find as well. Now, uh, last chapter here real quick. Real quick, because lunch is in the oven and it's, it has to come out in seven minutes. Anyway, um, the first first day I went over to Music Millennium. And second day I went to downtown, which we went to Powell's, where I got the books, and Everyday Music. Uh, that was our Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday, I was going to go to a couple of stores that are kind of down in the southern part of Portland. One of them I hadn't been to in about five years. The other one I had never been to. I, I read more of the Yelp reviews on the second store. I, I won't name it just to, you know, protect the semi-innocent. Um, and it was disorganized, cluttered, and uh, apparently the owner can sometimes be rude to customers. So um, that left just one store to go to, which was kind of all the way down by itself in its own area. But then I realized there were a few things that I forgot to look for at Music Millennium on the first day. And that, that was another thing about that made this trip kind of weird was it was, you know, I was kind of in a weird state, uh, was not totally, you know, with it when I was looking for stuff at Music Millennium on that first day. So I decided to go back instead of going to those stores down in the south of uh, Portland, I decided to go back to Music Millennium. And I am so glad I did. That was the de best decision I made. Um, and for my entire trip, I uh, found a couple of things I was specifically looking for. I forgot to look, um, in the filthy CD lot. I, there was a CD by Jean-Michel Jarre, who was a French, uh, French new age instrumental composer. And I really liked that album that was in it. Ouch. My knee is sore. Sorry. Uh, so I decided to look for more of his stuff. And I actually found the thing I was specifically looking for, which is one of those five CD uh, box, box sets. I mean, you know, they're they're just in the little sleeves. But yes, five CDs by Jean-Michel Jarre. That is the one that I uh, had from the filthy CD lot. It was kind of scratched up, so this copy will, will, will replace that copy. But yes, um, four more of his CDs as well to uh, listen to. So yes, I was very happy to pick that up. And obviously from my John Williams obsession uh, recently in the last several months, one of my first things to look for when I went to each of the stores was John Williams stuff. Uh, but I didn't find anything the first time around. But it, I decided to do a little more looking on Wednesday, on my uh, Thursday, on my second trip there. And would you, you wouldn't believe I actually found a couple things that I looked for but didn't find the last time. A couple of DVDs. Of course, this one actually includes a CD as well. This is uh, the uh, Across the Stars, uh, John Williams uh, album with Anna Sophie Mutter, arrangements made specifically to spotlight Anna Sophie Mutter's violin work. Uh, it, this is all, you know, compositions by John Williams from his film scores. Uh, I had the original standard edition CD, 
but this is the deluxe edition, as you can see, CD along with a DVD. So this has like five, I believe, five additional songs on the CD, and it's got a DVD, uh, Anna Sophie Mutter in conversation with John Williams. So uh, yes, I was very happy to get that. And it was originally $25, or yeah, $25, marked down to $17. Bucks. So very, very happy to pick that up. But the crown jewel of what I found there. This was kind of spendy, but for me it was worth it. Uh, the Blu-ray edition of John Williams with the Berlin Philharmonic. I've got the two-disc CD version. I love it, absolutely love it, but I've wanted to watch it, you know, to actually watch the concert, not just listen to it. And here it was. Yes, it cost me $55, but I don't care. It was worth it. Um, I had, I actually had plenty of money to spend, uh, to use. Yes, all this stuff, I didn't have to use my card at all. I had cash for all this stuff, so. And no, I almost never walk around with that much cash in my wallet, because it's kind of scary. But anyway, Yes, nearly two hours of a concert with the Berlin Philharmonic. I was absolutely over the moon to find this. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can give you a... Hopefully you can see the track list. You can pause if you want and read the track list. All of his famous film compositions are a part of this. I was absolutely, as I said, I was absolutely thrilled beyond words to find, especially those last two, actually those last three things, all three of those, the boxes, along with the Jean-Michel Jarre, found on that last day, last stop in the, in the Music Millennium on Thursday. So yes, lots of fun. Now, before I leave you, uh, I wanted to give you a little... Yes, Thursday was obviously the standout day, and it all started at the uh, Transit Center, one of the TriMet Transit Centers. Uh, they have a little uh, a little pond there with a little bridge that goes over it, a little, uh, with a little uh, green area. Very, very pretty. And there's usually some ducks or whatever... Uh, hanging around there. But this is what I saw on that day at the beginning of Thursday to start out my Thursday. Uh, as you can see here in this video, a family of geese, you know, two geese and their flock of, uh, must have been about 10 or 12 little goslings. They were still, they were so young, they still had their their frizzy down on them, as you can see. Totally adorable. And they this was like, you know, 12, 15 feet away from me. So they're obviously used to people looking at them and uh, ooing and awing over them. That was, I should have known it was going to be a good day. That was a good omen for me to uh, find those little critters there. Um, yes, I, I, I would have stay, stayed there an extra hour just to watch them if I, if, if they hadn't uh, kind of wandered off. They were a little, uh, you know, a little uncomfortable around people, especially with their youngins there. So yes, lots of fun. That was absolutely uh, the highlight of my uh, that day there. I, I, I just, I love nature. I love animals. And just, it was nice to see those little animals there clowning around. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed looking over my Portland haul as much as I enjoyed accumulating it. But yes, had a whole lot of fun. Can't wait for my next trip to, up to Portland. Uh, hopefully I will be uh, completely over my CD burnout at that point. But anyway, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to keep up with my new videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.